Unicorns Talk is a weekly podcast where we discuss the ups and downs of the human experience, from personal growth to romantic relationships and everything in between. This show is for life livers, life lovers, and life enhancers. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards, your life enhancement coach, and together we're going to laugh, love, and learn to maneuver all of life's little messes. Let's go. It's Latrice Sampson Richards here, your life enhancement coach, and you are tuned in to episode eight of Unicorns Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, The last couple weeks have been crazy, y'all. I moved from Texas to Florida uh, with my husband, and now I am in Cuba um, for work again. And so it's the last few weeks have been really, really crazy. It's finally like I'm finally getting to a place where where life is starting to settle down a little bit for me, at least for um, the next several months or whatever. And so um, that I'm really excited about that because I just feel like I have been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. It has been absolutely bunkers. And so um, I'm, I'm glad to kind of be able to settle down a little bit more. Um, I've just been so tired. Like, it's crazy. I, I've just been going, going, going. Um, and so I'm definitely looking looking forward to settling down a little bit. Um, just like last week, this week's episode is going to be a little short y'all. Um, just because I'm like, I just got here this week and I'm trying to make this happen. I definitely don't want to miss time with y'all. Um, but I also, uh, am just tired, you know, and I need to catch up on some things. And so, uh, today's episode, uh, is going to be a little short, but I still wanted to reach out to y'all, see how y'all doing and, and, um, hopefully give you a little word, you know? Um, all right. So this week I actually was able to catch, um, the 2017 black girls rock, um, which was really, really good. Uh, I don't know if you all watched it or not. It was on, uh, BET and it was hosted by Taraji P. Henson and aired, uh, this week on Tuesday, August 22nd. And so I felt like they did a really good job this year of selecting honorees. I mean, I think they do a good job every year, but this year they really did a good job of selecting honorees. Um, I thought that uh, all of the honorees were definitely deserving um, that this year, let's see who was selected this year. Uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, she received the social humanitarian honor. Uh, and if you don't know who Congresswoman Waters is, first of all, you need to get your life, um, and call from up under that rock that you've been under apparently. <laughs> um, but, uh, she has this meme that has just basically gone viral, uh, talking about reclaiming her time. And she obviously is a Congresswoman, um, and she's a strong woman. She really is. And she's been very vocal about her feelings about, uh, the current presidential administration and, and, her calls for impeachment and things like that. So she received the social humanitarian honor. Um, who else? Uh, Roberta Flack, uh, received the living legend honor and Roberta Flack is, I mean, like for real, she's a musical legend y'all. And Roberta actually looked pretty good. I didn't know Roberta was in a, um, I'm saying Roberta, like we cool like that. (laughs) Um, but y'all know, I mean, I never met a stranger, so it's just a matter of time anyway. Right. But, uh, I did not know that Roberta Flack was actually in a wheelchair now. Um, but she still looks good. You know, I mean, I don't know how old she is or like what her health is like or anything like that but she is absolutely a living legend and very well deserving of the living legend honor so um that was I was glad to see Roberta Flack get honored in that way they also had Natalie and Derricka Wilson um who are actually sisters-in-law and um they received the community change agent honors um and they have an organization called Black and Missing which actually uh puts out amber alerts. I don't think they call it amber alerts, but they search for missing children and people of color. Um, and they, they kind of just discussed how they felt like 
uh, our not felt like, but the statistics actually back up the fact that uh, black and brown bodies uh, or missing persons rather um, don't garner the same amount of attention and search effort as non-black and brown bodies. And so they created an organization to try to rectify that and to find, you know, people of color who go missing and so um that's a really uh, honorable thing that they do and and it's amazing for them to have dedicated their lives to that i mean definitely worthy of of that honor so they got the community change agent honor um then they had suzanne shank uh she got the shot caller honor which i never heard of suzanne shank honestly i have to be honest i had never heard of her before i watched the show but they did a little background on her and she's actually a businesswoman um and she's a very good businesswoman and so um i you know, kind of since done a little bit of research on her and she's very impressive. Um, you know, so anyway, she got the shot collar, shot collar honor. And, um, I think she's well deserving of that as well. And if you, if you don't know who she is, I definitely would encourage you to do some research on her because, uh, she seems like a very interesting person to be aware of, you know, like someone to learn from and things like that. All right. Uh, They also honored Yara Shahidi. And I I always say her name wrong. I don't know if I said it right or not. But it's the young actress from uh, the show Blackish. She plays the daughter on Blackish. And so she got the young, gifted, and black honor. Um, And this girl, well, I don't want to call her a little girl. But, you know, this young woman is, she's really an amazing person. Um, I did some research on her as well. Um, and she's actually, she just recently graduated from high school and she's going to be going to college. She, uh, listed off all of the colleges that she applied to and, uh, got into, including Spelman university. And she decided to go to Harvard, which I think is a, is a good selection, um, I mean, any of the selections, honestly, any of the universities would have been good selections for her, but she, she chose to go to Harvard. So she'll be starting Harvard this fall, I believe. Um, but she, I think this young lady has a really bright future ahead of her. Um, she, she comes from an activist family. Um, and also I didn't know that she was half Israeli, I believe she said. And so, um, that was really interesting also just to kind of see, you know, how all of the different uh, shades that, that incorporate her activism and all of the different perspectives that she have. And I mean, we're going to be talking about perspective today. And so, um, I just, I thought that that was a really interesting perspective for her to have and, uh, based on her ethnic background and things like that. So again, she got the young gifted and black honor and, um, I definitely think that she's deserving of that as well. Um, I think her star is definitely on the rise. And we're going to see a lot from this young lady in the future. I really do believe that. Uh, Let's see. Who else? Uh, Solange. uh, Solange Knowles. Which, I don't know. Side note. I really noticed that during the show, they really made it a point to not say Knowles. Like, to not say her last name. Which, I don't know if she's taking her husband's last name or not. Um, but they really made a point, it seemed to me, to not call her Solange Knowles. Um, and I don't really know how I felt about that. I mean, I love that Solange is her own person. She got the Rockstar Award. Now, I've been a fan of Solange for a while. Her first album, or I think it was her first album, the first album that I became aware of was, um, I think it's called the Hadley Street Dreams or something like that. Uh, I freaking loved that album um, and every song. I know every song on that album. And that was before people was really checking for Solange. You know, they were still calling her Beyonce little sister. <laughs> um, but I, I've i always really um, connected to Solange and her music and, and just who she is as a person. And so I'm really excited to see her starting to get the recognition that, that she deserves. And her last album, uh, A Seat at the Table, it was a really good album. And um, I think that, you know, she really was able to put into word and rhythm a lot of the sentiments that we experience uh, as people of color on an everyday basis. And so I'm really glad that, I mean, she is 
is a rock star, you know, and I'm glad that she's starting to get that recognition. So I absolutely think that Solange is deserving of that honor as well. And then last but not least, they have Miss Issa Rae. Now listen, I am a Issa Rae stan, y'all. It's so ridiculous, like how much I love Issa Rae. First of all, I think that she is beautiful. Um, I really do. I think that she's beautiful. And um, oddly enough, I like that her voice is deep. <laughs> Like it's not manly deep, but it's, it's, you know, uncharacteristically deep. And, um, and I like that for some reason. I just, I feel like she commands attention and, and I can really appreciate that about her. Issa got the star power honor. And, um, I think absolutely she was deserving of that. I mean, she's a writer, she's a producer, she's an actor, she's an author. Uh, if you don't know Issa Rae, uh, she started out with a YouTube show show called The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. And I fell in love with this show uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, I think it was like right after the first season, I want to say, of Awkward Black Girl or during the first season. And I just absolutely fell in love with this show because it was the first time that I really felt like I saw myself, you know, like um, she in her acceptance speech, speech, she talked about you know, these other characters that, that she had seen or grew up watching, like Elaine from Seinfeld and stuff like that, who are these just, you know, comedically awkward kind of characters that own their awkwardness and how she never saw herself represented in that. Like she did, but she didn't at the same time. And I was like, yes, I freaking love Elaine. Elaine is one of my favorite characters um, of all time. And I think that, you know, Issa absolutely hit the nail on the head when she said that, you know, we exist too, you know, awkward black girls exist too. And I'm definitely an awkward black girl. Um, I'm awkward in a lot of ways, you know. And so, um, I, I, if you haven't seen Miss Adventures or Awkward Black Girl, you should definitely do yourself a favor. I want to say that her book goes by the same name. And no, I have not read the book yet, but I'm not a big reader. Um, but I am gonna, it is on my list of shit to do in this life, um, in the near future. And so, I'm definitely going to get that book and and take a look at it she also has a show that's extremely hot right now called insecure and it's on hbo uh insecure is in its second season um right now and it is freaking amazing like i love this show because she's now taken like the misadventures of awkward black girl and i feel like she's grown up that character right so that character has really modernized and grown up we've seen the, the development of this character and she's created an entire world for this character now right so not only do we get the awkward friend but we uh, excuse me the awkward black girl but we get the awkward friends that come along with it and the different natural narratives that come with those awkward friends you know and and I just I love it I really love this show I love the way her mind works you know she gives a voice to an entire section of black America that goes you know unrecognized and and I think those are awkward black girls just like me and I love it and and awkward black guys too you know um and I love it and so uh Anyway, Issa Rae, her speech, her acceptance speech really kind of sparked uh, our discussion for today because um, she really talked about how she spent so much of her life defining herself by who she wasn't or what she wasn't and that, um, you know, that how that really kind of stifled her. Um, and she said that her life changed when she focused on what she liked about herself, what she's good at and what made her stand out. And so when I thought about that you know that really that stood out to me when I really thought about it I was like you know I think that what she's describing is a change in perspective because who she is didn't change you know how she interacts with the world didn't change all that changed was how she 
saw those things instead of seeing those things as negatives that would hold her back and keep her from being the funniest the prettiest or the the most popular she used those things to her advantage and just decided to be who she is and so awkward black girl misadventures of awkward black girl is really you know her life it's 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 Issa being Issa um obviously you know an exaggerated version of that I think (laughs) um because if you ever I don't know I just seem like I think there's a lot of art imitating life in that character um but you know nonetheless I think that she's really on to something there and so when I really thought about it I started thinking about my own growth and my own process and um you know I work with clients all the time about helping them to change their perspective and change the way that they see situations and things like that you know how you see a situation or an experience really does shape how you interact with it and how you're impacted by it you know and and like I said before and I'll say it again I'll say it a million times you always have a choice You know, you can choose to see only the negatives and allow those things to really hold you back and keep you from uh, from experiencing happiness and prosperity and success. Or you can choose to to see the positive in a situation or to see the lesson or what I like to call the silver lining. I mean, I am absolutely a silver linings kind of girl, but I haven't always been that way you know um so you know like I said it it made me think about my own journey and think about my own path and and how far I have come over the years and one story in particular you know I told you y'all gonna get very familiar with me the more we listen the more you listen to 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 this podcast you're gonna get very familiar with me um and that's a part of my own vulnerability journey but um it made me really think about my own life experience and so I'm gonna share an experience with you growing up I was always you know like the big girl and I was bullied a lot um I I don't necessarily, I never really felt like I had a lot of friends. I mean, I had friends, but I never felt like I fit in or like I was a part of the in crowd and things like that, you know? Um, And and so that's something that I think without realizing it, I had carried that with me even into adulthood. And when I got to college, I really started to come into my own um, and I wasn't as outwardly affected by um you know the my experiences but I had really internalized those things in a lot of ways and it it caused me to have trust issues it caused me to have some severe vulnerability issues um which actually caused my relationships to suffer and prevented me from really being able to have um and participate in strong and healthy relationships and so this was something like it was happening and I didn't even realize that this was happening and so you know like I you already know when I was approaching 30 I really kind of um, started on this path and journey of self-discovery and understanding but a little bit of time before that um, it was I want to say our 10th anniversary our 10th uh, high school reunion or 10 year high school reunion or something like that and when I went to the reunion um, it was so interesting to me because I really didn't want to go I went to an all girls Catholic school um, and there weren't a lot of black people at this school um, which is fine but uh, you know in in situations like that the black people tend to try to stay together you know um, but I always felt like an outsider in that group even though there were people in that group that I had grown up with like had known them my whole life it just felt different once we got to high school and we're kind of interacting with other people so I never really felt like I fit in but I never actually really had a desire to do so either not at least not at that point um in my life and so uh when I was 
when the 10 year reunion was approaching, um, I saw a girl that I went to high school with, um, just out and about, like before the, before the reunion. And, um, I hadn't seen her since we graduated. And so I said something to her. I was like, you know, Hey girl, how you doing? And if anybody who knows me in real life, you know that, you know, I'm always cracking a joke, even when I'm not trying to, I just say funny shit sometimes. I don't know why. Um, it's just kind of like who I am, you know? And so I said something in passing and, and she just thought that was the funniest thing ever. And she was like, Oh my God, you're so funny. She's like, you've always been like that. And the first thing that popped in my head was, how would you know? You barely even talked to me in high school. And I didn't realize it at the time, but those were my defense mechanisms, like really coming up because I felt some kind of way about whatever experiences we, you know, I had had or encounters that um, I perceived to have had when I was in high school. Okay. And I didn't even realize it at the time, but those things were still affecting me on an internal level. So then we get to the actual reunion and I don't know, like I just, I was not comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable. Um, but you know, you fake it till you make it kind of stuff, you know, like you just, you, you just make the best of a, of a difficult situation, but I didn't feel comfortable and I still didn't quite feel like I fit in. And it really bothered me. It didn't bother me that I didn't fit in. It bothered me that I cared. It bothered me that I was aware of the fact that I didn't fit in. And that sat with me for a while, um, for a couple years, actually. Um, And then, you know, I approached 30 and I kind of went on this journey of self-discovery and really got closer connected to myself and got a deeper understanding of myself and a deeper acceptance of myself. And that led me to, you know, being more vulnerable, putting myself on display and like, just really kind of being like, listen, this is who I am. And, and, and either you're going to take it or you're going to leave it either way. I'm going to be all right. You know? So what really made me realize that, um, perspective was, that, that maybe the perspective I had uh, of my upbringing was skewed or flawed in some way was when I did my, uh, about maybe a year and a half ago, not even that long, it wasn't, it was maybe a year ago, um, I did my very first Facebook Live. And um, I remember it, uh, I was so nervous to do the Facebook live and that's a whole other thing, but I was really nervous to do the Facebook live. And so I did the first Facebook live and, uh, one of my, this girl that I grew up with, well, she's my friend, one of my friends who was actually my sister's friend growing up. Um, she called me because in the Facebook live, I was, you know, just kind of updating people on who I am and stuff like that. And I said, you know, uh, yeah, I'm a therapist, but I try, I, I, even when I'm trying not to analyze, I analyze everything. I analyze everybody. And so she called me because she wanted to know what my assessment was of her. And I felt really uncomfortable about that. (laughs) I have to say, I felt very uncomfortable with that because the whole point that I was making is that I I can't help but to analyze because that's who I am. That's what I do. Um, but that I learned how to not share that with people because people don't really want to, you know, be analyzed, you know. And so um, she here she is wanting me to tell her um, what my analysis or my assessment of her was. And so I told her you know and so as we were talking after the fact and and you know I was again again talking about having been bullied and things like that growing up um and she said what like she couldn't believe that I said that I felt like I had been bullied and I was like well yeah and she said well she was like well you know she felt like I bullied her growing up she felt like I was her bully and I was flabbergasted. I could not 
wrap my head around how she could feel like I was her bully. Now, it's no secret that, you know, I didn't really care for her growing up. She, she, you know, she and I, our personalities are really different. And as we grew into adults, we kind of developed a different type of relationship. And so, you know, I do consider her as one of my friends right now. But as a child, we didn't get along and I didn't care for her. And she knows this. So that's why it's okay for me to say it. Um, but she felt like I was was her bully and so when she said that the, like the thought had never even entered my mind that anybody could have seen me as a bully and so what that did for me was it really made me challenge the way that I saw my entire social experience growing up and more importantly how I had allowed it to shape me and and shape my relationships and my interactions and things like that. I think that it it became a part of my identity and a part of my crutch. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that was a very eye-opening experience for me. I talk to my clients all the time about perspective and about um, how you see a situation and and how changing how you see a situation can have an impact on um, just, I mean, your whole life, like your whole viewpoint, your whole interaction, your relationships, the whole nine yards. But I had never really considered applying it in my own life in that particular way. And so what Issa Rae talks about, just to kind of bring it back around full circle, because y'all know I go on tangents sometimes, but when, when Issa Rae said in her speech, in her acceptance speech, that life changed when I focused on what I like about myself, what I'm good at, and what made me stand out, I think she's really talking about a change in perspective, because she didn't change what she likes about herself. She already liked those things. She just wasn't focusing on those things as her primary perspective. You get what I'm saying? She was looking at herself through the lens of not the things that she likes about herself and does well, but the things that she doesn't do well and the things that make her uh, an outcast versus the things that make her stand out and, and make her a unique individual. It was just a change in perspective. And that impacted her confidence level, that impacted her activities, her behaviors, her interaction with the world, her interaction with the people around her. And it did the same thing for me. Um, I think that when I changed my perspective, on who I was growing up, that I wasn't just the big girl who got bullied, that I wasn't just the victim and things like that. Like when I, it, when it actually, when I thought about it, I have always been a social person. I've always had friends and I've always had friends. The, the friends that I did have were people that I knew were actually my friends. So I learned how to weed people out at a very early age because I had to, I had to. Because kids were cruel to me. So I had to be able to decipher between who's a good person and who's not a good person. You know? So there were a lot of skills and things that I developed growing up that I had never really focused on or never really paid attention to. So the takeaway for today is you know, pay attention to your perspective and be really intentional about how you see the world. Um, Choose to see the world from a place of growth. Choose to see the world from a place of positivity. It doesn't mean to be naive or to be, you know, oblivious to the negativities that exist in the world. I mean, listen, shit happens on a very regular and consistent basis. But when you choose to express yourself as is when you choose to live in your skin when you choose to accept that you live in your skin and and you know embrace what you bring to the table and say you know what this is who I am this is what I bring to the table take it or leave it and really move forward in in that perspective or from the perspective that I have something positive to offer to the world I think that that's when you really start to flourish that's when you really start to experience life uh, from a place of happiness from a place of love um, and just being able to experience some genuine genuine connections and and even especially the connection you have with yourself so yeah 
I don't know. I don't know if that made sense. Y'all let me know if, if, if I rambled on or if that made sense to you. Um, if I actually made a point, um, you know, perspective is very, very important. Um, and, and the perspective that you choose to take shapes your interaction with the world and, and how you, how you experience the world. And so I try to experience the world as positively as possible. And I I have learned how to accept who I am and put my best foot forward at all times. And, you know, I saw a meme, I posted a meme a couple years ago, um, that I think is very, very fitting. And so I'll leave you with this. Um, I may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I am somebody's Henny straight. Okay. Okay. All right, people. All right. That's all I got for y'all today. Um, I really appreciate y'all for tuning in and, um, showing support and letting me express myself as is, you know, I am an awkward black girl and, and I am who I am and I do have a lot to offer to this world. And this moment right now, doing this sharing, of, of who I am with you all. Um, this is my vision. This is, this is the fulfillment of what I believe, you know, this is, this is the fulfillment of what I believe is my life's purpose. And this is what I bring to the table. And what I've learned is that it's enough. It's enough. Yeah. More than enough, actually. So that's it for uh, episode eight of uh, Unicorns Talk podcast. Make sure you check me out on Facebook and Instagram at Latrice Sampson Richards on Twitter at L Sam Richards. Um, you know, head over to the website, Latrice Sampson Richards dot com. Uh, like I said, I am your life enhancement coach. So if you need some help figuring out perspective in life, if you're in a place where you feel like, you know, you just you're ready for a change, but you're not sure or you're really struggling to to see things differently and interact with your world differently, give me a holler, you know, shoot me an email, support at latricesampsonrichards.com, or you can go over to the website and fill out a contact form. Either way, it works, okay? Uh, check us out on uh, the Unicorn Talk podcast is now on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. I'm working on, now that I'm settled down or getting settled down a little bit, I'm working on getting it on uh getting the RS feed, RSS feed on uh, Google Play. So be on the lookout for that. And, um, you know, once again, I, I love y'all. I really do. I don't, I'm not just saying that I love y'all and I appreciate you all for the support and the love. And, uh, let me know if there's any topics or anything that you would like for me to discuss, uh, any questions that you have or anything like that. Hit me up. All right. Hit me up. Okay. All right. Until next time, be well.